test one, two, test one, two. Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 1st. Well, this week was a very interesting one. We had two different rockets end up crashing. I uh, got a little bit more update. Uh, the first story here is from CNN News officials. One pilot dead, one injured in Spaceship 2's test flight failure. That's the Virgin Galactic spaceship that is selling tickets for a quarter of a million apiece for uh, quite a few people to go up in outer space. They said as soon as next year. I'm not sure if this is going to delay it or not, but speaking personally, I don't think I would uh, accept a free ticket at this point. It's still uh, like that. I think uh, for any practical purposes, they're still generations away, if not decades away. So anyway, the latest update on the crash is that uh, one of the pilots that was hospitalized parachuted to the ground, so I'm assuming what they're trying to say is uh, when the spaceship crashed that one pilot wasn't able to escape and jump to safety. I'm assuming they do have some type of a system like that as they're doing the test flights where the test pilots can actually bail out and then that way you only lose the craft, but evidently for whatever reason one of the pilots was not able to bail out. I'll just read the first part of the article from CNN. The first sign there was a problem Friday with Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 came at about 45,000 feet just two minutes after the space plane separated from the jet-powered aircraft that carried it aloft, officials said. It wasn't something overt with the Spaceship 2, said Stuart Witt, the chief executive of Mojave Air and Spaceport in California, where Spaceship 2 was launched and monitored. It was what didn't happen next during the test flight. He said, Witt did not offer details, but appeared to indicate the space plane did not follow its previous test flight patterns. So that tells me there must have been some kind of control system or something like that, although everything is a guess. I guess the uh, what they're going to do is they're going to work with the FAA, and they're going to investigate this just the same as a, a typical plane crash and to see what the problem is and what can be corrected. But, uh, yeah, I think as far as private trips into outer space, if you want to do something like that, you can do it with a balloon, really. I mean, why not put together a capsule that can hold about five or six people and just uh, use a helium balloon to go up into the edges of outer space? You can spend more time up there. Um, it could probably be in a lot better atmosphere and stuff. You could probably linger up there for a few hours and then come down gently. A lot safer way to go and a lot more practical way to go if you want to spend some money and um, get high enough to be able to see uh, the blackness of outer space and see the curvature of the Earth. And the second um, rocket explosion, we find out now, Just uh, I got an update lately that the uh, Antares rocket that exploded, I noticed uh, Reuters was one of the only few that um, titled it correctly. Everybody else was saying NASA rocket explodes, which it's basically a private cargo ship carrying NASA cargo. That would be saying, like, my truck exploded if I had packages aboard a UPS truck. So, um, yeah, Reuters give them credit for actually. I, I noticed as people were questioning it on Facebook, and people calling them out. A lot of the headlines of the major news sources were changing to NASA slash contracted rocket blows up and come to find out now with the latest reports. Uh, this is from CNN. I got this operator deliberately destroyed the rocket. So the rocket um, didn't blow up because there was a problem that caused it to explode. They detonated it on purpose. They didn't want this cargo ship because of something that they saw either in the speed or trajectory it was going to endanger civilian populations. Well, they do have a backup plan to where if the, the rockets are not performing and the guidance system is not performing properly, they're going to blow the thing up well before it gets near any kind of populated areas just for safety concerns. So uh, it seems like the cause of the malfunction had nothing to do with the explosion. The malfunction was uh, something in the you know, guidance system powering up the rockets or whatever. And uh, these rockets, by the way, are Russian rockets that uh, the, the engines to the, the rocket itself a refurbished Ru Russian rocket engine. The engines that they use for the private uh, cargo ship were not even um, NASA engines. So, um, yeah, basically you're just talk talking a car cargo flight by um, Orbital Sciences Corporation. Um, they're also going to merge with another co company too very soon. And this, uh, some people say it may impact the merger, but I guess it. Uh, some others say that it possibly won't. A few people that live in a little island community close by to the launch site have actually found little tiny pieces that have washed ashore of the debris from the rocket. Um, so they're telling people if you do see any debris or anything like that, uh, they have a phone number to call and don't try to touch it or go near it because it could contain uh, harmful chemicals and stuff like that. It also says several buildings around the launch pad have broken windows and imploded doors. So 
And it was probably quite an explosion to witness, but thankfully, as far as even the late reports, I don't think one single human person was even hurt seriously, um, let alone anybody killed. So that just kind of tells you some of the safety that's going on with some of these private cargo launches and stuff. Um, that's rather impressive myself. Okay, hopefully I didn't lose the first part. We'll go on from here. Something uh, reset itself on my computer, but hopefully I didn't lose the first part. And we'll just keep going and see what happens. This is from sciencemag.org. Earthquake sensors track urban traffic, too. Besides the roar of engines and honking of angry drivers, rush hour traffic also makes underground noise. We can't hear most of these good vi ground vibrations, but seismic sensors can, with a network of 5,300 geophones, devices that convert ground movements into voltage. Researchers recorded one week's worth of urban vibrations in 70 square kilometers area of Long Beach, California. And this is what they got from the data. They could measure how fast individual trains were moving between stations, count the number of planes landing and taking off at the airport, calculate the average speeds of vehicles in a 10-lane highway, all without any kind of privacy violations. They don't use anything like GPS cameras or anything like that. I've done some articles before about how you could use active sensors that are in people's cars. Uh, you could use their telephone, you could use their GPS, you could use all kinds of devices putting out signals in people's cars to track traffic, but people had privacy concerns. This would get rid of the privacy concerns just using nothing but a acoustic sounding devices that are used for earthquake traffic. Uh, that are used for earthquake traffic monitoring, whereas they're normally used for just earthquake uh, monitoring. Had no idea they were sensitive enough to detect that. I mean, takeoffs and landings from nearby airports. Pretty impressive, so I think this could be a good idea in the future. Keep people's anonymity, but still give you useful data for traffic use. And this last one's from IFL Science. You could be flying in a windowless plane within a decade. I think this is something coming by that needs to needs to happen because airplanes have to be structurally built a lot stronger because of the fact of the windows are the weak spot in the aircraft. You could. Uh, build them with less material and make them just as strong if you could project something on the sides for people that do want to look outside. This picture they're showing is like a panoramic projection across the whole uh, airplane itself making it look like a giant screen and seeing outside which for some people that don't like to fly probably wouldn't be a good idea. I would suggest just uh, little screens in the place of the windows where an airplane would normally have a window. You just have a little screen that you could uh, sit just in. It would basically for all intents and purposes provide the same thing as a a window seat and then that way the people sitting next to you especially people sitting on the aisle that don't care to look out the window wouldn't have to bother to look out and uh, you'd also have the option of turning it off and things like that but uh, yeah basically it's an idea that needs to come I mean just making the plane lighter and doing it this way would add to the fuel savings and maybe keep the ticket prices down a little bit so anyway as usual all the links to all my articles will be down below and uh, that's it for this week take care everybody I will catch you next week